Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, myself, Dilip. Uh, I'm from Siemens. Um, uh, the, today, I'm going to be present the case study um, uh, over voltage occurrence due to the ferroresonance phenomena during the EHV cable, uh, 400 kb uh, cable feeder charging condition. Uh, I'm just going to be over the following topics. Chart description of the system where this phenomena was occurred, followed by case study description, how it was uh, happened in step-by-step -step process, followed by comparison of site disturbance recorded values versus EMTP simulated results. In fact, uh, the whatever the case was occurred during the site condition, same was uh, rebuilt and re-simulated in EMTP. We compared both the results, followed by the same EMTP simulation results in the form of waveforms and the tabulated values, followed by the ferroresonance mitigation methods, which is pertaining to this case study, followed by a academic uh, 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 to study how this short circuit MVA is affecting, we conducted by using the frequency scan tool, which is available in the EMTP, which slightly varies the short circuit MVA of the source. We find out how the frequency is varied, ferroresonance frequency. That's what the presented. At the end, the conclusions and the recommendations uh, uh, to avoid the ferroresonance uh, phenomena. This is a system. It's, it's comprising substations. One is a source end substation. Second one is remote end. Source end comprising high voltage levels, 400 kV, 20 kV, 132 kV. Remote end substation comprising 400 kV and 220 kV. Both source and substation, remote and substation connected to 400 kV cables having the 14 around 15 kilometers of the cable. This is about the uh, system. And uh, in, in case of the cable feeder, it's having cable reactors as well. Mitigate the ferro resonance, uh, mitigate the ferranti effect. So whatever I explained here, uh, source and substation comprising the voltage levels, comprising the three different transformers. One is 400 by 220, second one is 220 by 132, third transformer is 132 by 400 kV. And it's connected to two cable feeders having the 14.4 kilometers. Remote end substation comprising only two voltage levels and CAFO base and line base it comprising. Transmission lines, it is a two a cable feeder in fact. The cable feeder having the line reactors mitigate the parenti effect. The um, uh, whatever the case, whatever the uh, phenomena was happened, just I'm, I'm going to step by step. Uh, I want to be explained here in coming slides. So remote end substation bus got charged through cable feeder by closing the source end substation CB via 400 by 220 kV and 220 by 132 kV, 132 by 400 kV transformers in series. So this is what it is happening. The bus is already this bus is already charged through some remote end substation. First, using respective breaker, this transformer is getting charged. Second step, this is 400 by 132 kV, 400 by 220 kV. Sorry. The second transformer is 220 by 132 kV. The third transformer is 132 by 400 kV. 
next step is the CB of the line CB is already closed. Hence, the closing of the remote end breaker, the bus is getting charged of the remote end bus. Next step, source end uh, substation trafo base are getting charged by closing the respective trafo base at the remote end. Third step, fourth step, fifth step, next six. This is what it is, uh, sixth step. In next step, it was tried to close a cable feeder two uh, is, is, is a cable one is getting charged. During this process, huge amount of the voltage was developed around 1.78 unit. It was persist around 2.2 seconds. It is a temporary over voltage again. Due to this, some damage was happened at the lightning arrestor. So what was the, the step one, step two, step three? Seven. This is five, six. After closing this breaker, after charging the trafo, just try to charge the uh, cable feeder, this cable feeder by closing this breaker. The moment when they close the breaker, there was a huge amount of the over voltage occurred at the source end HV side of the transformer. By, after closing the breaker, after closing the breaker, immediately there was a huge amount of the over voltages was developed at this location, HV side of the transformer, which in turn, in the off phase of the, it got damaged of the LEA. The moment R, R phase LEA got damaged, it, it, it converted into line to ground fault. Again, the differential, it operated as a differential. Moment once it operated as a differential, which in turn it gives as a inter trip to the remote end substation. This is a case study. The major over voltage, the nature of the over voltage is a purely power frequency over voltages. In the, it is a 50 hertz system. Frequency is a, a power frequency and its a time duration is very long. With the signature of the over voltage is clearly indicating it is a ferro resonance which was happened because of the 400 kV cable it's having this amount of the capacitances apart from the capacitances there's a lot of inductance which is incurred charging uh, uh, the no load transformers of the entire network So in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the, the whatever the same phenomena at the site, same rebuilted, uh, re-simulated, simulated in the EMTP tool, we found that there was a certain voltages over here. The first voltage is during the charging process, same phenomena, it was simulated. Simulation voltage was we got as a 452 kV, whereas inside disturbance recorder stored in the relay, we got as a 450 kV. Almost, it's very close to the site values or practical values. Same case, it, at, at the source end substation, the voltage measured was a 401.8 kV, whereas from the site records, it is a 410 kV. The voltage which was occurred, very huge amount of the uh, OV voltage, the simulated voltage was a 709.53, whereas the practical value was 734.49 kV. And when we, uh, using the CompTRADE uh, file and some tools, we were uh, analyzed what is the frequency is the dominant uh, in, the, in the waveforms of the TOV. We came to know that the sim from the simulation results, it is a second harmonic was the dominant. Whereas from the side DRs, the dominant also same as a second harmonic. This is about the uh, very uh, the results uh, uh, from 
statistical values from the simulation, uh, it's a bit close in, in, in many aspects. That is what it is uh, uh, here. The voltages, whatever the tabulated, and it is the waveforms of the sum of them. When we have the EMTP uh, software, we have the frequency scan option is there. By using the frequency scan option, we would try to analyze the ferroresonance occurrence possibility. We, came, we found that the frequency is around coming as 89 hertz. And the same happened and the same was recorded in the site as well inside the relay. So it's around 89 frequency. And when I see this uh, 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 waveform in, 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 in the harmonic uh, of the waveforms, triplin harmonic is again dominant, but uh, triplin harmonics doesn't have much significance because in three phase systems. So second harmonic is a dominant one. Same thing happened, uh, uh, same thing is reflecting by using the frequency scan also. So ferroresonance mitigation methods. It is pertaining to apply this network. It's the two portions. One is we identified because of the all three transformers were in series. There was a huge amount of the imprints was accounting with respect to remote end substations. Avoid that. From the 220 kV to 132 kV and 132 kV by 400 kV. Only these two transformers are serious in this condition. This is one remedy. Second remedy is switching sequence also slightly changed. It's directly um, the cable feeder directly charged first. Then in the next step, directly um, uh, the, the, the source impedance is reduced. With these two conditions, when it is charged, the substation doesn't have any exp uh, doesn't experience any over voltages, and during the simulation and the same recorded values also verified, it's almost it's 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 uh, closely the results are same. So these are the simulation results. The highest voltage it was uh, found that five hundred and fifty nine kV. The, two, the duration was only 0 0.37 seconds, 170 milliseconds. Whereas in the previous faulted case, it was around two seconds and 740 kV was generated. So that is the difference between the before mitigation and after mitigation. When it comes to frequency scan, the frequency previously it was occurred near to the secondary, near to the fundamental frequency. 89 hertz. Whereas after the mitigation, when we run through frequency scan option, the resonance frequency was occurred at the 641. It is clearly indicating far away from the fundamental frequency, and the frequency possibility, resonance possibility is very low. Same thing was proven. Uh, just to, to analyze. What is the impact of the system source impedance or source MVA or source fault current? That studied uh, a detail. So in this condition, we gradually increased just to know how it is getting impacted. Started with five kilo amperes. When the five kilo ampere source current is taken, when we verified through frequency scan, the possibility of the ferroresonance frequency is very closer to the fundamental. It is around 110. When we increased, when we increased to 10 kiloamperes, 15 kiloamperes, then the possible resonance frequency is 411. It is increased uh, from the kiloampere one further increase to fault current source fault current and reducing the source impedance the resonance frequency is increasing gradually
if I uh, increasing the uh, 25 kilo amp, uh, 25 kilo ampere of the source current, resonance frequency is around 501 hertz. For the 35 kilo ampere of the source fault current, the resonance frequency is around 581. 45 kilo ampere, 651. Further, 55, 711. And the 65 kilo ampere of the source fault current, the possibility of the resonance frequency is 761. This, uh, This is about the various fault currents, which is uh, uh, considered, and it is a consolidated one. Blue one is the five kilo amperes. Red one is last one is 65 kilo amperes. So clearly indicating that as we increasing the source MVA capability, short circuit MVA capability, the resonance is getting far away from the fundamental frequency, and the Ferro resonance possibility is decreasing. Another way, the, so the lower short circuit MVA capability or higher short circuit impedances source, the possibilities of ferro resonance is more. And in this case, the, the short circuit MVA is only 5 kilo amperes and the frequency is around 110. Impedance is quite high. Source impedance. Whatever this above results, and it is tabulated one, 5 to 65 kiloamperes of the source short circuit currents. It is another way of representation of the source in terms of impedances with respect to 5 kiloamperes with the, for a 400 kV system. The source impedance is 2.097 ohms. Similarly, 65 kiloamperes. The source impedance is 0.161. So these are the possible ferro resonance frequency which were find out from the simulation of frequency scan option in EMTP. So this is the 761, which is a very less possibility of occurrence of ferro resonance. So this is a, these are the conclusions. Source impedance is, uh, as the source impedance is increasing, another way is lower the short circuit MBA conditions. The possibility of resonance occurrence is more. Further, resonance frequency is very close to the fundamental frequency. This may lead to over voltage occurrence. And the equipment may get damages due to temporary over voltages of long duration. To avoid this, large, very low short circuit capability, charging or maybe continuous condition, it must be simulated, can be verified to avoid the ferro resonance condition. And, that, and this is, uh, thank you, uh, that's it.